Welcome to the 2023 Overcrest Film Festival as part of the Overcrest Rally. Now, if you are somehow unfamiliar with what the Overcrest Rally is, it is a one-of-a-kind event that reminds us to take the car, to get out and drive the machines we have put so much time, money, and effort into. The film festival, on the other hand, is a celebration of automotive content and storytelling, or more specifically, the creators behind that content. It was a no-brainer as longtime friends of Stanceworks when Overcrest reached out and asked if we would play host to this event this evening. So tonight, we will be celebrating our favorite automotive content from across the board, and we will do our best to immortalize it forever and keep it from being lost to the algorithm by giving out some awards to the content we feel is most deserving. This is a first ever format here on Stanceworks, but I'm confident it's gonna be a ton of fun and you're gonna see some new stuff, some stuff you should see. We're gonna celebrate some of the best of the best. So with that said, let me pass it on to Jake and Chris. There's only one thing left to do. What do we have to do? You have to come up here. We have to film the Film Fest stuff, dude. That's right. We gotta get this done. Time is running out. <sighs> All right. I'm what gonna are you gonna drive? Out. I'll, I'll hop in the 911 and I'm heading out right now. Let's go. Thank you so much to everybody that's here out in the audience watching online for the what is it the third third fi annual uh, where'd you <laughs> where come, come from? from oh i slept in your shed last night <laughs> <laughs> well now that we're all here <laughs> we just we want to thank everyone it's so amazing everyone that came out here and if you're joining us online we're so happy that we're able to share with everyone and celebrate creators in the automotive sphere. You're probably wondering why we're doing this. Well, we're here because in the automotive space, there needs to be more places where great storytellers, uh, great content builders are highlighted and featured. And that's what our dream has always been with this event. And uh, we're really excited about this year. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get right into it. We've got a lot to show you. To kick off the Overcrest Film Fest 2023, we're gonna lead in with the best documentary. Nothing's better than having a story well told. To introduce it, our good friend, Rutledge Wood. Hey everybody, Rutledge Wood. So excited to be here with you. You know, when you think about motorsports and sports in general, the coolest thing about documentaries is how often they remind us that we have way more in common than we do not. You know, everything around feels like it's always looking for ways to split us apart, put us in these funny little groups that none of us really signed up to be in. Uh, but sometimes there is a bright star, a guy like Charlie Johnson, that reminds you that there are wonderful people out here in this world doing everything they can every day to make not only their day better, but everyone around them better. Uh, Charlie, you're an incredible guy. I love this one. Best documentary, Blind Sight, by The Grassroots Project. So our first race car, I called my brother Mark. Mark, you want to do the racing? I'll do the work and build the cars and you want to drive. We ran Columbus on Friday night, Jefferson on Saturday nights. If there's a Tuesday race, we'd make it. Specials, we'd make them. We did car shows, parades. We were very busy. Then we got Pepsi involved and we won a lot of races, we had a lot of fun. I think our best win ever was Lake Geneva before they closed down. Mark started dead last. Passed everybody we raced against every week that kicked our butts around here. And Mark tore them up. 
I couldn't even watch the race. I had to turn around. I couldn't watch it. I thought something my belt was going to break. My name is Charles Johnson. I grew up here in this town of Arena. Went to school here. Worked here. Pretty much lived here all my life. When I was 19, I started losing my eyesight. It took all the way till I was 39 to totally lose it. I felt so worthless. I had went through severe depression. I didn't want to work on cars no more. I didn't want to race. I didn't want kind of nothing to do with anybody for a while until I learned that I can live with this. I just have to do it a different way. I guess I took blindness as don't take nothing for granted. The good thing about losing your eyesight, the way I did, it was slowly, so I could progress my skills without using all my eyesight. And I think it helped me adjust to losing it all. It just took forever to seem like for me to get motivated again. My brother Wayne moved in with me. He was helping work on cars and kind of took over for a little bit there. And I'm like, you know, I, don't, I can sit here and do nothing or I can make this happen. So that's kind of where it got back into working on cars again. I got this C10 and I, I knew I could make it better. Of course, not knowing what it looked like, but it really helped me to figure out what I want to do with my life. There's people worse off than I am. People got bigger problems than I do. I can make my life better. I'm not stuck. My attitude is, I want to keep working. I still do landscaping. People are like, how do you do landscaping? I said, I've been doing it all my life. I said, I just walk the grade and tell them what I want and what I don't like and they'll change it. I worked for a guy for a month. He didn't even know I was blind. Didn't have a clue and I didn't want to tell him. And uh, he did, never questioned me. He's seen my work and he says, just keep working. He says, looks great. I still do a lot of work as far as driveways and cement. I pour cement yet. I play basketball, but I ain't very good at it, but I try. You gotta just try stuff. Even if it don't work out all the time. Don't give up on life because you got a disability. You gotta surround yourself with people that wanna help and they wanna learn from you and just go with the flow. This is my son's first year in racing. I mean, he's never raced go-karts, nothing like that. For what he's learned in a year, it's unbelievable. He's really come a long way. He's getting better at dissecting the corner, telling what the truck needs, and that's the biggest part of making them work. You gotta know what it does. I can't see the truck on the tracks no more. I have to do it all by what people tell me. All I'm looking for this year is laps. He just needs laps. The first year of racing for me, learning has been difficult at times. You have to understand that you're not going to learn it in one night. Even though my dad is blind, I don't see him that way. He, he can do everything that you can do. And that really helps with my confidence in him and what he's telling the crew guys. I trust his experience, and so I know he's doing the right thing for me. It really means the world to me because it kind of brought us closer together.
There ain't nothing I can't do on this truck. I put a stub on it already. I pulled the motor out, put it back in. I changed all the suspension. I do the brakes. I tinker with this truck every week, trying to make it better. I made a tool up that we can do ride heights because I can't read a tape measure. It's a piece that goes under the frame and it slides up and bangs in the frame and I tighten it. And then I just hand it to Tyler in the truck and he measures it and tells me what it is. And, and that's how I do my ride heights. And there's just different ways of doing stuff even though you can't see. I gotta use feel and touch. I have to touch it. I can just listen to the motor and smell the exhaust and tell you if it's, if it's where it should be. I listen to people's tone of their voice and I can, I can tell if they're stressed. I can just sense that they're on the edge. If he gets on the radio and says, Dad, it's loose. I know how loose it is. And he's like, Dad, it's a little loose. Uh, you mean fix a little bit, you know, and then it's not so bad. I feel more comfortable at the track, than even at work, anywhere, because I know the environment. I know what's going on all the time. I'm the coach. I get a lot of inspiration from my girlfriend, Sue, Tyler's mom. She's a cancer survivor. That's worse than anything I've had to deal with. I met Sue when I was 18. She's always wanted to take care of people, and we started foster care through this county, and we wanted to make the kids' life better. And whatever it took, we brought kids here that couldn't even talk. And uh, I worked on this fella for three months to get him to count to 10. And Having so many kids through my house just felt like we made a difference. You know, like they got to go back home and they're a better person. That makes you feel good is when they get to go home and there's a big smile on their face, like, hey, it's gonna work out. And uh, we always say, just call. If you have issues, just get a hold of us. We'll, we'll help you any way we can. If you wanna take care of people, no matter what kind of physical shape you're in, you can do it. Another rookie of the season in the Johnson Derby to appear. Lee Trucky. How about a nice man for Tyler Noble? It's like I've matured a lot since I've even gotten the truck. Patients have grown. Winning my first heat race, it was exhilarating. It was the greatest feeling I've ever had. I just want to thank the Midwest Truck Series for giving me the opportunity to start my career somewhere. I love it because it's very competitive, it's balanced, you can't get outmotored, and it's a fair series to start out. I think the relationship between me and Tyler since racing, we both got competitive edges. I want to see him perform good, but be respectful and be committed. This is a lifestyle. This is not a job. This is not a hobby. This is a lifestyle. One of the biggest things I tell him is be smooth. Get your rhythm and don't force the truck to do what you don't want to do. If you're jumpy on the gas, or jumpy on the brakes, all you do is upset the truck and you can't tell if it's loose in, tight off. You just gotta be smooth. The improvements he's made is unbelievable for some is a true rookie. And he's gotta get their respect from the drivers that he's gonna not wreck them. It's all trust. If you don't trust the truck, don't get in it. He's gotta trust me that I didn't put it way out there where he can't reel it in. And I gotta trust him that he's not gonna tear it up and get hurt. That's the biggest thing. My dad used to say, you can watch a train go by or you can get on it and be somebody. If you can make your life better, do what you can with it. Don't ever stop because you, you don't think you can do it. You can do it.
Thank you, Rutledge and the judges, for choosing Blindsight as best documentary. Thank you, Chris, with Overcrest Film Festival for nominating the film and supporting my work. Gasroots Project exists to be an advocate for grassroots racers like Charlie Johnson and help tell their story while making a positive difference in the sport. When Charlie and I filmed Blindsight, the word can't never came up. It's a powerful word, and I don't believe it's in his vocabulary. Now, does Charlie have limitations? Certainly. But watching him, you'd never know he was blind. He's mastered a lot of skills and doesn't let his disability direct his life. Though he couldn't see, he was always willing to oblige when I prescribed a scene. Charlie was that way when I first met him, and I knew he would illustrate his story wonderfully. He views his disability as an ability, and that is the essence of a champion. On the last day of filming, Charlie asked me if I wanted to drive his orange Chevrolet C70 to lunch. In shock, I quickly replied, yes, you'll see this special truck in the film. Charlie knew I loved automobiles too. In that moment, I could tell he was driving his truck with me. What an honor to do that for him. Thank you to Charlie, his girlfriend Sue, son Tyler, and daughter Chantel for letting me tell this story. Thank you to Charlie's nephew, Bryce Miller, for encouraging me to do the film and the Midwest Truck Series for supporting it. I hope Blindsight inspires you as much as it has me. This is not adding to the production value at all. Get out of here, this is my scene. Our next category is best motorsport film. You know, motorsport is more than just entertainment value or a sport in the sense of something for fun. Motorsport really does matter. You know, the, the heritage behind a lot of these brands and the history of going racing really influences and actually adds to a lot of the innovation that comes out of the automotive industry. It's really important and it's great to look back at some of the heritage that these brands, namely Porsche, has in motorsport. This year was the 100th running of Le Mans. And few car companies have aligned themselves with racing like Porsche. And Le Mans has been their destination. It's been their goal. So to see a documentary celebrating that quest that Porsche has had to excel at a place like Le Mans and to have it narrated by a number of my friends, including Patrick Dempsey and Patrick Long, it's a pretty special film. So congratulations to Racing with Giants, Porsche at Le Mans. Le Mans. The name stirs the heart of every race fan, car enthusiast, and serious driver. The oldest endurance race in the world. One of the most grueling and rigorous driving challenges ever conceived. The first time on that circuit going down the straight, I felt like I was in a rocket ship. One third of racing's triple crown alongside the Monaco Grand Prix and the Indy 500. Is this visceral connection of driver and car. 24 hours through the dark of night, oppressive heat, and unrelenting storms. Le Mans is the race to win. That's the race. It's not just a test of the car. It's a test of the driver. You know, a cool thing about Le Mans, radio tires, headlights, windshield wipers, all came out of this race. We've got this race, it's in our pocket, and the water temperature started to creep up. You can see the lead going, you can see the race going, you can see everything everybody's worked for a year just going up in smoke. This contest is as much about reliability and tenacity as it is about speed. But make no mistake, it is about speed. I just drove it completely stupidly and fast as I could, and there we were doing 246, and I don't think anybody's ever been quicker. Every year, hundreds of thousands of fans line the roads of the small town of Le Mans in northern France. It's a race filled with beauty. A parade of headlights illuminating the night sky gives way to the morning's first light on the circuit. The cry of engines and the spray cutting through the storms. The faces of exhausted engineers. The raw emotion of exhausted drivers. 
and Porsche win the 1998 Le Mans 24 hours. It is without doubt one of the most special memories any driver can have being on a Le Mans podium. But every struggle and drama goes hand in hand with the beauty. Every moment has the potential to destroy aspirations and ambitions of manufacturers, teams, fans, and even countries. Their shot at victory always one setback away from evaporating into the midnight air. Hey, how you doing? Matt Silla, executive producer for the Racing with Giants uh, documentary. Just wanted to say on behalf of everyone here at Haggerty who was involved uh, in the making of this film, thank you for uh, awarding us Best Motorsports Film here at the Overcrest Rally Film Festival. Uh, it means a lot just because you guys are our peers in the community. Um, we had a ton of fun making this. Glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully everyone had a safe and relatively legal uh, rally. Hope to see you next year. This is Highway 12 in Utah, specifically Hogback Ridge. It's a tiny little road, no Armco, divides into two canyons. That one over there, and this one over here. It's dangerous, makes your lungs feel tight and your stomach feel upside down. The concept of where this road began for Overcrest started in 2017 when Alex Nelson and I filmed Dazil for Stanceworks. There was a lot of incredible moments in that film, but one was something that stuck out the most. And I'd been waiting to head up here the entire trip. Car week was great, it was nothing compared to this. It all began right here. Alex was shooting with the drone. And we were driving back and forth on this ribbon of a road, capturing footage at sunrise. The sun came from that way and it was perfectly perpendicular. And this cliff face right here showed a perfect outline, a perfect shadow of my car. And it wasn't necessarily the car that was important. It's the fact that when I looked over, I saw myself. It impacted me so much that I felt I needed to show somebody. We formed Overcrest based on that feeling, the feeling that many of you got when you were here in Utah. With all that in mind, Jake, Jeff, and I put together Overcrest for rallies, for the love of driving. So right now, I am driving a new to us 2008 Porsche Cayman S. This car has 300 horsepower, 2,900 pounds, manual gearbox. It is Porsche at its simplest form. And we plan to take this underappreciated, underrated Porsche and bring it back to its roots and turn it into a proper stage rally car. And the first step in doing that is shaking the car down in its untouched, unaltered form to see how it feels and behaves at its current limits. 
From there, we'll tear the car down, craft a plan, and then the process of building it up into a rally car begins. All right, so Chris, why are we here? Where? Well, in the Mercedes and here. Because we're shooting the film festival. We're, we're shooting the film festival, doing all that right now. But <laughs> one thing I want to do first, of course, is thank all of our partners. It's been incredible to see everybody that wants to come on, participate, and uh, support Overcrest, support all of you guys, everybody that's here, everybody that's watching online. Um, these are the dudes, these companies, are investing in what we do, and they're really showing their moxies being part of something special. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's it's telling that uh, these are the folks that actually want to be out here with us and want to engage with the community. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I'd love to thank Mobile One. If you've kind of noticed what Mobile One is doing, they, they're getting it right. They're participating yeah. in, I mean, they're at Lufka Cult, they're doing Overcrest. I mean, they're putting out great, great books. They support creators, they support me. It's, uh, it's a great company. Love Mobile One. Thank you for being here. Can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, any company that is in the trenches with the enthusiasts and kind of get what the offering is that they're actually selling is awesome. And Nokia and Tire is another one of those. You know, they've been with us since 2001 at the Overcrest Rally. They've been an absolutely great partner. They've been growing with us as we're growing. And huge, huge thanks to Nokia and no, Tire. They, they, like when we started... The rally was pretty small. Right. It was very quiet. There wasn't like all the, the hype and ever the hype train. The visibility. Was, the visibility. Yeah. And they were still there. Another one we have to thank, of course, is Bring a Trailer. They've really helped curate the culture and making people realize how special all these cars are. Absolutely. And they participate in the community as well. And uh, honestly, the Bring a Trailer community itself is is wonderful. I mean, I've sold a car there. And by the, maybe by the time this is aired, this car We'll That's be, right. We'll be on Bring a Trailer. You those guys are buy this one. Those guys are absolutely awesome. I, I love Bring a Trailer. Uh, next up, we have to thank Haggerty. Haggerty has also been with us last year and, and has been growing. That. That's right. Awesome. I am a Haggerty customer. I love their offerings. I love, you know, they also are tuned in to the industry and to kind of they're, the enthusiasm. If you look at what Haggerty's doing, they've got great publications. They've got great films. You know, they're putting out, like, yeah. I love Jason Camissa, what he does at, uh, at at Haggerty. It's awesome. I love those guys. And again, these are companies that um, they're for real. They're not just throwing money at things and walking away. Everybody here matters and they and they believe it and they uh because we don't want just anybody coming on the rally that's right we we, we are selective yeah we want good fits for these companies for ourselves and for them and speaking of throwing money away fcp euro because you and i both oh. have spent a lot of money over the years with fcp euro and for good reason yeah. right it's a great company they have great offerings and guess what again they're here they get the enthusiast mindset. Yep, they they build it. some amazing cars. And uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty comfy in these seats, Chris. Yeah. And Shieldman, yeah. another one of our partners. These aren't Shieldman these seats. These aren't Shieldman <laughs> seats, but they do make very comfortable seats. They did. And in the scholarship car that you can see right over there. Yeah. Or out there somewhere. You're right, it's actually out there. It's out there. Yeah, not yeah. there. Yeah. Regardless, that of course is outfitted with Shieldman seats. Awesome seats, awesome company, and I love Heritage kind of, Company. Right. They've been around it. forever and they do the, you know, I just love the vintage corduroy look. And they nobody does it better than Shieldman. No. That vintage corduroy look is awesome. Yeah, another awesome company that we have to thank is 
CSF cooling. Yes. CFF radiators. Yes. Especially, I guess, I, if I'm building a BMW engine in that Mercedes <laughs> that I'm building, I think I'm almost, like, I have to get... You're forced to do a custom radiator, I'm forced, right? Well, I'm forced to do something to make it not explode. As That's, far as I know. Oh, as yeah. As far as I know, BMW BMW. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have CSF cooling uh, dial us in with that. And they are here today. Again, another company that's proving their moxie. And uh, we also have some partners that we need to thank. For Stanceworks. Yeah, Stanceworks. Thanks, Stanceworks. Everybody that's watching, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Um, you know, I've been a friend of Stanceworks for 15 or 20 years. Yeah, like um, close to the inception. It's been absolutely incredible watching Stanceworks grow and become what it is today, which is basically a giant in the industry. And kudos to Mike with his YouTube channel. And thanks for letting us host here. It's, it's awesome. And... Um, you talk about curating and kind of like directing and influencing car culture as a whole. Yes. I mean, Stanceworks. Stance has you know, you, done like it. without without Stanceworks, I wonder if anybody would even call things Stance. You know, like Stance before Stanceworks was like was probably like dudes doing karate, being like, "What's your stance? Is it like the, <laughs> is it like this one? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah or yeah, is the, it like the like this? That, I mean, that was Stance. stance. Now. Right. Stance it's, is your car. It's changed the vernacular. It is. They've, <laughs> they've changed it. And uh, I mean, Stance Works isn't all about stance necessarily anymore. It's about building and a community and everything like that. And motorsport, of course. And, and motorsport now. You wow. see what they've just done. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, thank you, Stance Works. And thank you, Lightbow Works. Absolutely. Which is like neighbor to Stance Next Works door. for helping us out with the scholarship car. Those guys absolutely. are awesome. Byron and Khalil. Um, come from a great background of working on a ton of cars. Um, BMW, mainly. They have the M1 at their shop. I've seen wow. M3s, M5s. Yeah, they know uh, their stuff. They know their stuff. And I, I, I cannot thank you enough. We had a car that we were going <laughs> to do before this E30. And it was this Audi 4000. And it didn't work out. And it was like, and Mike called me and he goes, uh, and Mike and Byron were like, hey, uh, maybe we should uh, think about pivot. Maybe, pivot. We'll pivot. Maybe we'll pivot. Because what if someone's driving around in this car where you the parts are on obtainium and, and it breaks down on the rally? And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. Because we point. didn't really know who was coming on the rally at, on, at a time for the scholarship program. Right. And uh, we didn't want to leave anybody stranded. So we picked out an E30, which is bread and butter for the guys over at Like Bow. And as you can see, right there. It made it. It made it. They've got that thing <laughs> dialed absolutely dialed in and this car scholarship car is going to be going up on our other partner bring a trailer that's right for uh for charity for 43 institute and last but not least we have to thank our partners that are here today at the film fest itself avance is an absolutely awesome club we talk about car culture local to this area avance is absolutely amazing and just like them donuts and drips steve over there amazing group of guys group of people again influencing culture and keeping enthusiasm alive Yes. Also, I'd like to thank Able Film Company because I know his arms are absolutely burning <laughs> right now, hand holding the length of the shot. Thank you, Skyler and Chase, for coming out today and helping us film. I really appreciate it. All right, All let's right. get to it, Chris. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get to our. Uh, let's get to the film festival. Ooh, I almost lost it. He's When Nokian reached out and asked me if I wanted to drive the car from Oregon to Colorado for their little Ivalo event, I couldn't say no. On top of that, we got the opportunity to stop at multiple resorts and do some skiing and snowboarding along the way.
You know, every year, the automotive industry tries to get us to buy a new car. But there's something about the classics. That's why I'm proud to announce that this year's car commercial of the year goes to Tag Heuer Porsche. glass on him and action Ryan okay roll off great now tilt the watch to the light and caught come on for me all for me no, no. I'm just doing my job David Leach. Way to go, man. No, you way to go. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you get the call about directing the Tag Heuer ad? I did. Sounds and like a blast. are you in? Yeah, I'm in. And I thought, what if you play the director in the commercial? Yeah. You're directing the commercial, but you're also the director in the commercial. You're yeah. already there. Oh. It's too much? Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're the director. Yeah. Of the commercial, not in the commercial. I'm getting confused. <laughs> Okay. I can't tell what's real anymore. <laughs> Pickleball this weekend? Absolutely. See you on the court, brother. Hey. Oh, oh. Tammy? Yeah. Sorry. Prop master, Tammy. Thank you. Master? How'd you get that? Oh, Do you get a bachelor's you. first in props no. and then you work your way up to the master's? That's very funny. <laughs> Can I have the watch back? W uh, what watch? The watch that's probably behind your back. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a Carrera. It's a Tag Heuer Carrera. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because it's worn by the best drivers in the world. Yeah, exactly. I know. Can you give it back to me? Oh, um <laughs> Oh, hold on a second. Yep. Oh my god, they're yeah. just like all day. It's in my ear. Yeah. You're talking to no one. What's that? Yeah, you don't have a radio. Uh. <laughs> give me a minute alone with it. Why do you need a minute alone with it? Just one last spin around the dial. What do you say? 60 seconds. I say no. Thank you. I absolutely said you're the no. Best. That's why you're the master. No, the prop that's... master. Okay. Gosling took the watch again. Now. Tammy, I'm gonna turn on the windshield wipers. 
Give it to me now! No. Give me the watch! Give me the watch! I'd rather cut off my hand than give you this watch! I need the watch! No. You gotta get this watch! I will too get the watch! Never. Give it to me now! Cut! That was great. Really good. Oh. Can I get playback? Amazing work, oh, Vanessa. Thank you. You were incredible. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for doing this commercial <laughs> with me. You okay? Yeah. You're yeah. a comic genius, oh, and I appreciate you doing this so with me. That's so nice. Hey, um, yeah. next time, don't step on my lines. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ryan. Prop Master Wayne. Let me guess. You want the watch? I'm gonna need that watch. In past film fests, we've always kept a positive and we've never done the worst of anything. Um, but this commercial is probably one of the worst that we've ever seen. And uh, it's amazing that we did get somebody from Lamborghini as a representative to come on afterward and accept the award for the worst commercial. Enjoy. <laughs> This one's for you. Concrete yearner. Tamer of curves. Master of speed. Wear your finest suit. Dirt is made for it. Let the show off begin. On this new concrete. Spray paint powder on tires that thrive on the rim. Dust is gold. Dirt's for the boat. Black out the sun, raising red clouds on that dry ground. Make gravel rain down. Let adrenaline and fun collide. Spray grains of dust aside. It's no filth. This is design. Any amount of grime is fine. The more you get dirty, the more you'll shine. Dust is gold, dirt for the bold. Dust is gold, dirt for the bold. Frank? How you doing, Jimmy? How about you have Lisa and the kids go for a walk? I gotta talk to you about something. Oh, okay. Hey, hon, take the kids for a walk. What's this about, Frank? You having a good day, Jimmy? Sit the f down. The little commercial you did, it won an award. And your uncle got this in the mail today. The 2023 Overcrest Film Festival Worst Commercial Award goes to Dust is Gold, Dirt for the Bowl. What a piece of shit commercial. You don't know shit about cars, Jimmy. Everybody knows it. You go out in the middle of the desert, you're sprinkling dust around. The more you get dirty, the more you'll shine. Nobody in the family saw that commercial before you sent it over to Lamborghini. Got a big baggy t-shirt, a gold chain, and a mustache my cat could lick off. You have no idea how much you've embarrassed this family. And you know what? You're lucky, because you're in the family. So you're not even gonna get that. You're gonna get something better, Jimmy. You're gonna get my brass knuckles. Every time I hit you, I want you to remember each line. You took a snowboard down a mountain with no snow on it. Concrete yearner. Well, at least the cinematography was nice. You know, the cinematography was, was very good. Yeah, we can say that about it. And cinematography is obviously super important in films in general, automotive films especially, and not everyone gets it right. True. But this next film that we have for best cinematography certainly does.
My name is Jason Adam Sandler Camisa, and I'm here to introduce the best cinematography category. I think cinematography is very important um, in a world where everyone has the same tool. We all have a phone that can take video and can take pictures. And there's a difference between taking a video of me sitting here talking to you and me taking you on a journey somewhere. And cinematography isn't just storytelling. It's taking a person from a time and a place and transporting them to somewhere else. And that is something we should all be celebrating when we're not behind the wheel of our cars doing really bad stuff on back roads, like you guys probably just did. I told Jimmy not to buy that Porsche. I even drove his once. Something about it, it did. It's like it goaded you to be reckless. We had a good script in the works for him too. What a waste. And then I wonder, could I have done something? How are you feeling? Glad to be off the racetrack. The team is gonna miss you. If you ever want to come back. I'm thinking about a new hobby. I'm not sure. I reckon Medea's heading out again tomorrow. All the way down the coast. Visiting friends. George. This thing you're asking me to do, there's people who do it. Anyway, I barely know her. I know. There's only one soul in the world that I trust. And I'm asking him now. A favor for a friend. What's she driving? You remember that red Cobra that Shelby gave me last Christmas, 2026? It seems that Medea has taken a liking to it. That's odd. Right? I didn't know she had an interest in racing. If she did, she sure never shared it with me. They're getting worse, aren't they? Are you gonna be okay? To it's fine, I can drive. Just not professionally. Damn. You got my hopes up there for a second. I just get kept it together. You know, I heard something once that there's two kinds of drivers the ones that get killed before they become great, and then the ones that get killed after. And there's me. You gotta stop beating yourself up over this, Max. It's been months now. You gotta let it go. It's in the past. We're shooting for two weeks in Hong Kong again. Meanwhile, my wife is doing God knows what with whom. Probably has been for a while now. Maybe it's not what it looks like. Look, I just want to find out before the press does. That's all I care about at this point. You write me with everything you find out and send pictures too if you can. You're a real friend. 
I appreciate it. I found it when I was cleaning out the garage in Huntington Beach. What's with the hooks? What am I supposed to do with this? Ah, Maximiliano, you've been telling me for five years that you want to catch some thousand pound swordfish, but I haven't seen you hit the water once. So that, that's a little reminder. Once you're tired of the asphalt, maybe you can unwrap the hooks and go out to Catalina or something. Thanks, Leo. One of these days, man. I'm feeling reckless tonight and I'm not a fan of the weather, so why don't we get some cheeseburgers on the way back, huh? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. I got a date tonight. I got a date what? tonight. What? Yeah, little Lothario, finally! You think she's the one? I don't know. How am I supposed to know that? Take it from me. You'll know when you know. Let's get out of here.
They're getting worse, aren't they? Driving can move speed with It's fine. I can drive. It's funny weather. Drive the rain. Maybe it's not what it looks like. Go out to Catalina or something. Definitely have like this. We have a three and ninety-one. Max Harper and Leonardo Valverde the home of the What a waste. And then I wonder. It seems that Harper just wheels the Valverde in both cars and his black cabin. Could I have done something? Number twenty-three Harper appears to be uninjured, but Valverde has been killed in the crash. Maybe it's not what it looks like. George, I hope Hong Kong's treating you well. I've been thinking a lot about what you said. About letting go and getting over things, leaving them in the past. You're right for the most part. Letting go is the goal. The ideal course of action. It's something that needs to be worked on. And I'm working on it. And you know, I think I'm getting there. I've been trying to salvage one more minute with someone who's been buried for over a year. To tell him all the things that I wanted to say after that race. To apologize for, for slipping up. And only now am I starting to realize that the time we have with someone is decided long before we even meet them. I don't think I'll ever get tired of this view, Leo. I forgot to water the chrysanthemums. Be a minute. I think there's something that you need to understand, too. Some things are harder to bury than others. And some people take longer to let them go. I guess time will tell whether or not I turn out to be one of those people.
Hi, my name is Ryan Alexander Huang, and I'm the writer and director of Endless Yesterdays. Uh, first off, we're just so excited and honored to have been selected to screen here at the Overcrest Film Fest. This was really a very small indie production that I put together with some of my old classmates at USC. And really the only way we were able to make it happen was by connecting with the vintage car community. So the Red Cobra that you saw in the film was actually also used in the opening of Ford versus Ferrari. So I just wanna give a really big shout out to Superformance and especially Rich McDonald for letting us feature that car and so many of their other cars in our film. Uh, I also wanna thank two very passionate alpha guys Jeff Martin and Brandon Adrian for making it possible for us to use Jeff's Julietta Sprint. So Endless Yesterdays is really a proof of concept for a full feature length film that we're currently working on that really delves more into mid-century uh, motorsport. Hopefully more to come, but until then, thank you so much for taking the time to watch our short. All things equal, the best car content's probably on YouTube. Uh, great storytelling, you know, if you broke something, there's a DIY. I spent a lot of time watching that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can something's watch. always broken over here. You can watch masochists like yourself on YouTube. <laughs> but there's so much good stuff on there. So we had to pick a runner-up. And to introduce our runner-up, here's our good buddy, Andrew Ritter. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Andrew Ritter from Ritter Goods. As an automotive artist, I'm constantly on the hunt for inspiration and videos that get the gears turning. And in this fast-paced world of content creation, it's often all about capturing attention with loud and extreme videos. But every once in a while, you get lucky and you come across a movie that manages to capture your heart as well. Only A Road Trip Away is one of those channels I love because he manages to do just that. David pairs a really unique, calm demeanor with introspective curiosity and an artistic cinematography to produce some beautiful movies that range from the world of overlanding, road trips, Porsches, and just general automotive adventure that is sure to inspire and make you want to get out in the world. It is my honor to present the runner-up for best YouTube channel, only a road trip away. For me, the final form of function, beside its purpose, has to be beautiful. I ended up with this bare engine block sitting in an empty warehouse. It is time for a new lease on life.
man, that guy gets it. He really does. He's a man after my own heart. There's a lot of contrast. That guy has had a lot of failures, a lot of successes, and films it all, uh, all beautifully. So to announce the winner, we have a very special guy, a great friend of mine, and this dude really knows his shit with a YouTube series and built one of the best cars of 2023 on his YouTube channel, Mike Burroughs. If I were to explain the existence of StanceWorks with just one word, it would be storytelling. In 2009, StanceWorks set out to do just that, to share, celebrate, and inspire at least some segment of the automotive community through a combination of written and visual mediums, which sounds a lot less cool when you call it a blog. But over the course of these 15 years, StanceWorks has evolved into what it is today, and along that journey, the landscape of our art form has changed tremendously. With the advent and adoption of YouTube, and a world in which everyone has a camera in their pocket at all times, the art form of automotive storytelling has evolved far beyond anything we ever thought it could be. Today, there are millions of automotive content creators bringing their best to YouTube's grand stage, and with them comes a bit of everything for everyone. From niche and abstract to the obvious front and center, YouTube represents an arena in which we can all find sources of inspiration, excitement, knowledge, empowerment, inclusion, and entertainment through the art of visual storytelling. It's hard to say who does it best, but when tasked with the decision to give such an award, one channel comes to mind. Bottom to top, this channel does it all as host Scott Mansell works diligently to push the community forth in his own way. For best YouTube channel, we are thrilled to give this award to Driver61. And that's the difference between the letter of the law and the spirit of the regulation. And in Formula One, there's almost no spirit. You lot think Gunter Steiner is a mad team boss. That would be a fucking bunch of wanker. But this guy is on another level entirely. Of all the people in Formula 1 we could talk about, Flavio Briatore's story is filled with controversy. He was good at winning, but was always on the edge of being thrown out of the sport. Until he was. Flavio Briatore has been banned from all motorsport. Flavio Briatore is now a man banned from F1 for life. But he was part of winning seven world titles in total, and one of the most charismatic characters in F1 history. Because it was one of the best. This is his story of dealings with the Mafia, financial fraud, plenty of cheating and international disgrace. A young Briatore born in rural Italy in 1950. Next category is best short. And there's one production company that's been putting out consistent content for as long as I can remember. It's like hand over fist, just yeah. all the time. All the time. It is an absolute machine. You know, I'm proud of you, Chris. You didn't put a short joke in here. Oh, no! That's a perfect <laughs> opportunity to do it! Anyway, here's our good friend, Larry Chen, to introduce Best Short. Hey, everyone. It's Larry Chen here. I've been shooting with Ken Block for many, many years. The first really big project that I worked with him on was Gymkhana 4. Electricana means a lot to me because it was definitely one of the last big projects that we had a chance to work together. You want to talk about the ultimate shutdown, Las Vegas, and specifically Las Vegas Boulevard for many hours at a time. The actual shoot took pretty much an entire week. And we were completely flipped upside down for that entire week. I pushed myself physically, mentally, and I pushed the camera equipment to their absolute limits. Ken absolutely changed my life. He changed my career, and I owe so much to him. I'm going to miss him so much. Enjoy the video.
Hey, what's up? Brian Scotto here from The Hoonigans. Uh, if you're watching this, it means one of two things. Either I never actually got to the start of the rally to begin with, or the car I was driving never made it to the end. Either way, I hope you enjoyed uh, the Overcrest Rally. One day, I'm going to do it. But uh, why I'm here is to say thank you. Uh, it's really rad to win the award for Best Short Film at the Overcrest Film Festival. And uh, yeah, it's, it's super cool. Uh, when Ken and I first started making these films 15 years ago, that's right, it's been 15 years since the first Chimkana film. Um, I don't think we ever thought we'd ever win an award or let alone there be an entire film fest just dedicated to automotive filmmaking. And uh, that to me is actually more important than even winning the award. Uh, it's cool to see that there's this entire industry built around filming, the hobby we all love and we all enjoy doing. And uh, Electricana was, was a, a completely different one for us, being electric, a lot of different rules and everything that we had to do, but uh, it, was, it was cool getting to be able to shoot down Vegas and all these things, and obviously um, being one of the last things I got to do with Ken, it'll always be really special to me. So thank you very much, and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys there next year. Love that. Love, you know, it was a really tough choice between, um, there's two kind of like Jim Conner films this year. And uh, it was Ken Block and Travis Pastrana. Ken right. Block did the Electricana, which won. Congratulations to you, super awesome. And Pastrana did the Subaru. Yeah. With like insane horsepower Subaru, which is like, <laughs> it's an incredible film too. And I love them both. So I was trying to decide which one that we would choose. And I think what kind of pushed me over the edge was Pushing that enthusiasm with with EV, yeah. I think was really cool to be able to see that it, it can be done. Right, EV can be cool was 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 a big it's, part. It's of that. a next step forward. Yeah, I yeah. think I think that is really cool. And I mean, we have to mention that an entire generation grew up watching Ken Block and yeah, those Kim Kana films and his his production. And it's just it's amazing. A huge thanks to Ken Block for you inspiring know, us all yeah, over we, over the course of generations. We'll we'll miss you. Yeah, we'll miss you, man. All right, Jake. That's a wrap. That's it. That's it. That's another rally and a film festival in the books. I, uh, I think it's time for us. Well, for everybody else, it's a rally and film festival on the books. But for us, we haven't done any of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for us to head out on the rally very soon. I'm going to get my uh, last hat here. Oh, God. Let's drive to Oregon. Hey, Chris, we've got an awesome idea for our 2024 rally. Guys. Yeah, we... Are you there? I think this is a perfect idea. You know, we know these roads like the back of our hand. Are you there? We know there's a ton of people that want to go, and it's just an absolute... What do you say, Chris? I have no service. It's amazing weather. None. It's easy for people to get to, but it's kind of hard to get to, and there's so much to explore. It's a perfect Overcrest rally location. Guys? Guys? Chris? Are you there? Chris? I can't hear you. I have no service. None. I think I found a great place to have the rally in spring. Let me show you. <laughs> 